All right, match three on the play. Two lands, two cr uh, three creatures, and two removal spells. Yeah, this is fine. Brown scale and angle are a little bit expensive, but this start is fast enough. I don't want to fetch a land out of my deck yet, so I'm going to lead with the tap land turn one. Opponent scry to six and put a card on the bottom, or scry to five and put a card on the bottom. And a wild growth turn one. Interesting. All right, we'll do the only thing we can do, play this vessel. Plan on cracking evolving wilds for black. Fertile Ground. This is probably another combo deck of some sort. Though I'm not sure exactly what sort that is. Alright, Grizzly Salvage or Crack This Vessel. I'm going to be getting a land either way. Um, Grizzly goes a little bit farther. And is a little bit harder to activate, so let's go with that. I can also play Moldegraph now. But I'd rather make my land drop and get closer to this Gurmag Angler resolving. Evolving Wilds. Compulsive Research. I'm not exactly sure what type of con combo deck this is, but with only ramp and uh, card draw so far, it's most likely what it is. Okay. Here I could play Scavenger plus Angler and then plan on trying to crack this next turn to get Scavenger back online. Um, I could also play Vessel, f Crack Vessel first, and then play Angler, so I can make sure to have four card types left for this Scavenger. What's in my graveyard right now? Uh, I think I'm going to go with the two creatures plan. Try to actually start getting my beat down on. See if I can outrace this person's combo. And I'll leave an enchantment in the yard? Well, no, I'm going to get an enchantment from Vessel anyway. And I'll probably get a land from Vessel too. Should I leave an instant in the yard? This Doomblade might not be getting cast anytime soon, so I guess I'll go with that. Alright, Paragon Drake. I'm not really sure how this deck plans to go infinite. But I assume it's an infinite combo deck. This might be the familiars combo, just without any of the familiars, where they get a Sage's Eye Denison and a Mnemonic Wall and a Ghostly Flicker and then they mill you out. Alright, they scribe three cards to the bottom and one to the top and pass the turn. So most likely I'm going to be playing one removal spell and cracking the vessel this turn. So let's start off by cracking the vessel. See what we can find. Sinkweed Amp, Mold Graph, another Angler. Another Angler sounds like good news. Especially once I uh, dredge back the Stinkweed next turn, potentially. I'm chaining everything here so that Ghostly Flicker doesn't get me. But if they flickered it, it would just come right back in and then die to the Edict anyway, whereas Doomblade, they could use it to save it. Another 4C, okay, that's pretty slow, luckily. 
three cards to the bottom, one on top again. Mold Drifter revoked. Well, now I don't have any reason to get back Stinkweed Imp. I just want to get the pressure on now. And here I'm probably afraid of like a capsize lock, maybe. That could be something they might do with an infinite mana uh, deck, which would make me potentially want to play another Angler. However, I also am scared of them flickering a Paragon Drake multiple times, so I might want to leave open the Doom Blade in response to that. What to do? I could play Brown Scale and an Angler, but I'd have to get rid of my entire yard to do that. And it would make this Mold Graph zero power. I think I'll just hold open removal. Alright, Mold Drifter. Tribe Elder. Alright. Unless they have like a mana leak, they are going to die here. And we're going for the kill right now. Okay, we win. No real clue what our opponent is doing yet. Most likely, like I said, it's the Sage's Eye. Sage's Row Denison, Mnemonic Wall, Ghostly Flicker combo, and all this other stuff has to draw cards and ramp toward that. With the sideboard. Choking Sands could be interesting tech against all these lands that tap for multiple mana. I Hill Spell Long could be good against Mnemonic Wall. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the Choking Sands and see if I can blow my opponent out with that. And I'm going to cut all the slow cards that I can, or most of them anyway. I want to keep my removal and I want to keep my mill cards, but the cards that don't really do anything else I want to get rid of. I guess I can cut one angler since I'm cutting two of my stinkweeds. Makes it a little bit harder to cast. And we'll go with this. Alright, we have a one lander, and these vessels are pretty bad in a one lander because they take forever to get going. One removal spell, so I think I'm going to mulligan. Look for some sideboard cards. Alright, well, I'm going to keep this. Nighthill Spell Bomb. I'm not sure how good that's going to be, but I'm going to try it out. Put it on top. Alright, turn to Compulsive Research. Ditching a Forest. Play this out while well, they don't have any counter magic up. Find ourselves a green source. So we can actually resolve this vessel. And we might be forced just to cycle this Nihil spell bomb to find some action. Because if we give them an infinite length of time before we start playing creatures, it's not going to matter how much removal we have. There's a Peregrine Drake. Uh, 
generating quite a lot of mana. Into Moldrifter. Yet another Utopia Sprawl. They're very intelligently not doubling up on their lands with any of those. Ghostly Flicker. Now they get to go nuts. I could exile that Ghostly Flicker right now before they untap and have Counter Magic available. I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't think it's going to get any better than this. Oh look, another Ghostly Flicker. They also have the ability to not have to tap out before the Ghostly Flicker. Um, because of the way they can stack the Mold Drifter and the Paragon Drake, they still have additional time after the Paragon Drake resolves, but before they have to start with the triggered ability. Another Wild Growth comes down. Ghostly Flicker number three, so I guess me getting rid of that first one does not really matter at all. We go up to five cards in hand. Cycle a Lonely Sandbar. Another Mold Drifter. If I could draw a black source, I can go deadweight, deadweight chainers and clear the board out. Oh, I guess not now. But I think I might end up doing that anyway. Let's see. Deadweight. Deadweight. Oop. The reason for this is this at least prevents them from getting a land with Sakura Trimolar. Or potentially saving that to protect from any effects. Well, this game is going a lot worse for us since we haven't been able to establish any sort of attacking force. Three cards on bottom, one on top. They're at a full seven cards in hand. Mole Drifter, okay. Let's see if we can find anything useful. Executioner's Capsule, okay. That's all, all right. Play out this green source so these vessels actually do something. I can play and crack one next turn and crack Executioner's Capsule. I don't think my opponent's going to give me time to do that. They think they're going to probably figure out a way to beat me. Since they're already halfway through their deck, down to 30 cards in deck. Have a resolved Mold Drifter and Paragon Drake in like. 9 mana right now? Maybe 10? Yeah, 10 mana. Okay, Archaeomancer. Archaeomancer, Mnemonic Wall, same thing. So now they get to go infinite. They ghostly flicker the Paragon Drake and the Archaeomancer as much as they want, generating infinite mana. And then they ghostly flicker Paragon Drake and, and Moldrifter, or sorry, Archaeomancer and Moldrifter as much as they want, drawing as many cards as they want. And then they have infinite mana, as many cards from their deck as they want. And presumably they have a way to kill me this turn. I'm just going to F6 here and see what that way is and confirm it's Sage's Road Denison. Alright, tuning back in. Our opponent drew a bunch of cards in their deck, only has 12 cards left. Generated some red mana. Um, and finally killed us with a Carbex Torch. So at least now we know their kill condition. 
and we can sideboard again. I think I'm going to keep everything the same. I could potentially get some disenchants in here, uh, but the choking sands basically do the same exact thing, and I don't want too many of those effects. Alright, we get to play first. Two chainers, werebear, grizzly salvage, this is fine. We'd love to see a sideboard card, but this is completely reasonable. Start off with the Werebear, next turn I can Grizzly Salvage. See if I can find a way to get to seven cards. Alright, they're going all in on one land, so if I could just find land destruction, I will win. I'm not getting to the number of cards I need this turn, so let's start with Grizzly Salvage. Alright, I'm going to take the Angler drudge, Dredge with the Imp. And pass the turn after attacking. We actually don't have our second black source we need for land destruction, so we have to draw that as well. Yet another fertile ground. Everything's on the same land. Alright, so do I want to dredge back the Stinkweed Imp? The problem is that everything in my hand is black, and I'm dredging back a black spell, which means I'd only get to resolve one thing. Which would be an angler, which would speed up my clock by getting the angler on the battlefield, but would not let me draw toward another black source to speed up my spells. I think I'll go ahead and dredge. I think this is good enough. Oh, I did mill one of my choking sands, unfortunately, so that's one fewer of those I can draw. I could Grizzly Salvage and be greedy and try to find another black source, but I think it's better to resolve an angler. For sure. One, two, three, getting rid of some lands, and an instant. And pass the turn. So now next turn we can Grizzly Salvage to get the Werebear back online. Alright, that's the fourth spell on one stinking forest. Fifth spell. If they manage to go off with just one forest whenever we have choking four copies of choking sands we sideboarded in, it's gonna be very upsetting. Four cards in hand, six enchantments on a single forest. Alright, that's a mold graph scavenger. Alright. First we're gonna look for a swamp. Well, there's a forest that doesn't really do anything for us. I'll simply take another angler. I might need the, Well, I could take a forest so that... Yeah, I'll resolve a scavenger this turn. It seems fine. Okay. And put them dead on board next turn. If I could have left open capsule and the activation, I probably would have done that, but I only have one black source, so... They have one turn. Alright, they tap their forest for seven mana. They're starting off by evoking a mole drifter. They need to hit an un untapped land probably so that they can Paragon Drake as well this turn. I'm not really sure what else would be good enough. There's their untapped land. There's the Paragon Drake. And they pass the turn. Alright, I guess they're planning on blocking one and bouncing another or something like that? Well, let's take away the blocking option from them. So now they have to add another bounce spell or another counter spell to the mix.
tangle. Oh, that'll do it too. I guess that's the reason for me not to have attacked with everything there. But um, then that would be worse against bound spells, so I'm still glad that I did. I can play Executioner's Capsule to have another kill spell open later, or I can play Stinkweed Imp for the pressure, but it doesn't provide nearly enough pressure, so I'm going to go with Capsule. If I could just find a choking sands, everything would be okay. They put a card on bottom and three on top. And here's another Peregrine Drake. Excellent. For them, not for us. Let's see what they can do with these last three cards in hand. And nine mana. There's the Archeomancer. Do they already have a Ghostly Flicker? I don't think they do. They're going to go get a 4C, okay. Casting Ghostly Flicker. Alright, well, that's a good game. They have infinite mana now. I'm going to go ahead and F6. It's not really a good game, so I'm not going to concede. They have as much mana as they want. And at the end of all these loops, they can go get their Tangle again. Not to mention they get, have a 4C in their hand and two other cards, so they get to dig at least six cards deep. All right, well, I'll see you all on the other side and um, tell you what happened. Okay, and we're back. Our opponent did find, manage to find uh, and resolve their Muldrifter. So now they have infinite mana, infinite cards, can go find their Caravex Torch and kill us again. So unless they uh, sideboarded out their Caravex Torch, then uh, they have the game here. So here's a uh, look at Paragon Drake for you. There's this version, there's the blue-red version, there's the inclusion in Tron version, there's a lot of different versions of Paragon Drake. Uh, there's the familiar version where they, they mill you out. I predict that it's going to be banned, as I think a lot of people do uh, also predict. So I'm not the first person saying this by any means. But um, I guess we'll wait and see. And uh, hopefully we'll have time to debut at least one Paragon Drake deck in the meantime before such a thing happens. All right, on to the next match.